I was raised in a Christian home um, with both parents who loved the Lord and each other. And um, so I think I always knew about Christ, but I don't think it was my faith until high school. I always knew that God loved me, but I feel like I never had a reason to question his love. And then um, when I was 14 years old, a freshman in high school, my dad was killed by a fifth offender drunk driver. When my dad died at the age of 14, like it didn't just go away. There was a court trial from the age of 14 to 17. And I really had to like wrestle with that. And I saw things like crime scene pictures of my dad project on courtroom screens and um, just like having to go to court and like face the woman who killed my dad, the multiple offender drunk driver and like asking God, like, do you love her? Like, is there love for her? Is like what you have for me, your love for me and your salvation, is that only for me? Is that also for her? And um, just having to walk through that and like understand God's love for me and that it isn't just for me. I would say for like a really long time I was probably really angry and um, resentful and I didn't believe that God's heart for me was good and I had horrible coping mechanisms and um, I feel like every lie I believe was tied to a lie I believed about God's character. I didn't understand that you can't get rid of brokenness and sin in certain instances but like I guess I had a hard time ex understanding the separation from Christ so I felt like God didn't care love for his people, which wasn't, isn't true. God totally loves and does care for his people. My junior year in high school, I went to Mexico on a mission trip. And um, I really probably only went because, like, during the summer, it's kind of boring when you're in high school. Everyone wanted to work with the kids. So my godfather was like, hey, we need more people to help out at the rehab ranch. So I went to the rehab ranch, and I made meals with these men and played soccer with these men and Bible studies with these men. And a lot of them were deported for um, drunk driving or alcohol-related issues. And so being that my dad was killed by a fifth offender drunk driver and then spending, like, weeks on end with drunk drivers, like, I just felt like I couldn't run from what God was telling me to do. And I remember driving back from Tijuana to California, where I live, and... Um, passing Chow to the woman's prison where the woman who killed my dad was there for 15 to life. Um, she got second degree murder. And so we're driving back and I'm just like feeling this, I'm so angry and I'm so convicted and I don't know what to do and so I'm mad. And um, my godfather and one of the other guys from the organization that we did work with is just like talking with me and I'm mad and I'm telling them like, you can't honestly expect me to love her like God loves me. Like you can't expect that from me. and like that's not fair and like I don't even know what forgiveness looks like and you're asking me to just like even think about it I was so mad like I was like I think I had to wrestle with the, the lie that if I forgive her that means I didn't love my dad like that was a lie that I had to wrestle with and I feel like Satan really tried to use that to say like if you forgive someone then you're saying that what they did is okay um, but that's that's not true it's not saying that it's okay it's saying like I see the brokenness and I choose to love you through it. Within a couple weeks of being back, like I felt like God was just saying like forgiveness is a letter. Forgiveness is a letter, forgiveness is a letter. And so I wrote her a letter and um, I sent it and it was just like saying like, hey, like you probably know because um, my name's on the envelope, like this is the woman um, who's the daughter of the man you killed. And like, I just want to let you know that like, I forgive you. Um, I don't really know why. I don't really know why God's telling me to do this, but this is where I'm at. And like, you know, he says in the Bible that there was this guy, Paul, and he murdered many and like God redeemed that. So maybe he can redeem this. Six months later, she wrote a letter back to me and was just saying like, like, how can I accept forgiveness from you and from God when I can't even forgive myself? And just showed this like sadness and, um, and I don't know why, but like my heart just wanted to show her the gospel and, and um, be that. And um, I was I was just kind of thinking like she is in prison and like who is going to show her the gospel? Like who who is, if I don't, who is? Yes, God might bring someone else into her life, but like if God is telling me to do this, then why am I not being obedient to him? She wrote to me telling me like I'm being discipled by this lady in Celebrate Recovery and I've accepted Christ and I'm telling my family about you and about God and um, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think that's, it's like a really long synopsis, but I think God changed my heart by just showing me how ugly it was and um, that I wasn't any different than her, that I, I didn't, I wasn't any better than her. Um, I think he, he showed that he's a good, good father. Um, 
that he doesn't abandon his people, that he loves them and he cares for them and he forgives them and that he's a God of restoration and um, healing and um, that he breaks ties, um, that he is a chain breaker, he sets free, he restores, um, he renews.